Let's go over some simple um, workflows inside of Vitala to help organize the building of your assets. So let's go to Vitala. Let's create an example project. I have to rename it just to show example. And then the first thing usually with our rigged assets is we start with a model. In this case, I'm just going to do a really simple model. Uh, let's organize this a little bit. So I'm going to call this uh, limb. Uh, actually, I'll call it an arm. So this will be an arm. And I'll group it and call it my model. And I'll save this out as a new Maya ASCII file. And recall this can be Maya, uh, sorry, model. And so uh, if I hit save down here, it'll save it out. There'll be a version in here. Um, and then the other thing I can do is I can export it. Exporting will delete any extra nodes that aren't attached to the top level nodes. So it's a way of cleaning your file, but it can also destroy things. So the best, if you need to clean a simple scene, use export. If you need to save a complex scene, use save. So if I hit open now, I'll get my file back. Um, if I want to turn off this auto zoom when the file opens, I can go to settings, options, uh, auto focus scene, turn that off. And then if I go here to data, and open this, it just opens the way I saved it out. Uh, sometimes it can be nice to have the autofocus in case your model is really big. So anyway, here we are. Um, here's our model. So now with our model saved out, we need to start making the base of our rig. Um, Patella works by defining a, a minimum amount of, of, of data or structure that our rig is going to build off of and then everything's scripted from there. So we'll start by just creating a simple um, three joint chain. And this is going to be what we usually call the structure. So here's joint arm, here's joint elbow, and here is joint wrist. So this is our three joint chain for our limb. Uh, we can delete our model now, and let's just group this under a group called structure, or we'll call it setup, and then we'll create an ASCII file here, and we name this structure, and in this case I'm just going to export it out because that it's a very simple scene, and I know that exporting will clean it. So here's joint arm, joint elbow, joint wrist. Now the problem with this is if we go here and we tweak it a little bit, um, now our orientation, if I go into object mode, is not facing down the joint. So anytime I make any subtle tweaks to this, it's going to be messing up the orientation. So um, Vitella has a way to handle orientation so that you don't have to uh, continue defining it. Or, or having having to manually set the orientations all the time. Uh, and it does it via attributes. So uh, right now, if I go to the joint, there's no attributes that define the orientation. But if I go and select a joint and hit Add Orient, now it's got a bunch of attributes. Uh, so uh, to quickly look at this, the aim axis is going to be x. So that means x is going to do the pointing. The up axis is going to be the Y, so the Y axis is going to point upwards. The world that it lives in is the is the Y is um, Y up. So um, aim at is going to aim at the child. There's other options here, but I won't get into it now. Aim up at is going to be the world. Uh, in this case, because it's the start joint, uh, it just needs to live in the world. Uh, I might, because it's going straight up on the Y axis, I might change the world up axis to Z. Um, it might do a better job of defining the, the up axis if it's on a, on a line that's um, perpendicular to the, to the joint chain. Um, yeah, so for the first joint, that's, that's a good option. So I'll go to Vitella Hub and hit Orient Joints. 
and now you can see this first join is oriented, but this second join I haven't added any attributes to, so it just gets left the way it is. I'll add orient to these last two joints, so add orient. And now if I go here to uh, the joint chain, it's going to aim at the child, but in this case I want the aim up at to be the parent rotate. So that means it's going to look at the rotation of this one and, and live inside that space for the up axis. Um, so then if I go here to this last one, I want child, I want it to aim up at uh, parent rotate and actually I don't want it to aim at the child because it has no child so I want to switch this to local parent and um, local parent is the same as aiming at the parent except with local parent um, it's like you're giving it a negative offset so it'll actually point at the parent but be, be aiming uh, away from the parent um, so I'll just run it and show you what that means on your joints. So yeah, you can see here the it's aiming at the parent really, but it's uh, offset it on the opposite direction. Here it's aiming at the child, and it's living in the space of the parent rotate. So here's my joints oriented. So now if I go and I edit this again and I hit orient attributes, this gets updated automatically. So I'm happy with this and I want to save it off so that I can access it again later so I'll export it and so that's my structure now uh, to start bringing all this data together we have our code tab and our code um, tab you can basically define a manifest and and define the order that all the data and uh, custom scripts that you write come together so the first thing I want to do is do a new data import I'll bring in the model um, so if I hit process right now, it'll basically go in and bring in the model. Um, and then the other thing is if I do a new data import and do structure, it'll bring in the structure. Um, now these are just uh, Python code actually. So in here it's uh, defining main and then it does process.importData. Process um, is um, a class that's available that works on the current process. So this is saying current process, import data, and it's bringing in the model. So if I go here and I hit process. I, I have other options that I can access um, for the current process. Um, we'll get into that maybe a little bit later. Um, but for now, the, the biggest command that you're going to be using is import data. And that basically just imports the same data that's in the data tab. So whatever the name is here is the name you would give it here, and it'll bring in that data. So the way that most of the data is defined is it has an import function. So uh, by default, just importing the data will, will do something desirable. Um, like, for example, skin weights will import data on anything that's been exported out. Uh, we'll get into that later. So uh, let's just keep going with this. Um, so right now I have it coming in and it brings in my model and now I want it to bring in my structure so I'll hit process again. So I've set it up now so that uh, when I build it I have my model coming in and I have my structure coming in. So now I can start kind of gluing stuff together. Um, the first thing I'll want to do is um, create some skin weight. So let's do that by coming here, selecting my model, going skin, bind skin, option box, and let's uh, change it to joint hierarchy. <coughs> um, heat map should be good in this case. Just set it to 0.5 and apply. So it's gone through, it's created the skin weights. I can rotate this, all's good. I can go here now. Okay, so Maya, in here we have ASCII file, binary file. These are basically just Maya files. Control CV saves out the control CVs when we're building a rig, like it'll save the position of the controls. Control colors will save the color of the controls. And skin weights will save the actual uh, weighting that we have on our skin. So I want to save this out so I can rebuild. So I'll 
select skin weights, hit add, and here's skin weights. So I have two options down here, export and import. Um, if I, I have to select an, a mesh to export, so I'm going to select this mesh and hit export. So um, the big thing now is uh, this is saved out to the skin weights data folder. If I double click on it, it'll open that folder and I'll have a version and I'll have skin weights. So if I go into skin weights, there's arm and it saves out a, a weight file for per joint. Um, and then it also saves out influence info about like what influences are affecting the mesh and where they are in space. Um, so if I open this file, it's just basically a, a data array. Let's see if I can. Um, yeah, so here it is. And it's got a bunch of values um, that are really, really uh, small values, but uh, it saved up the values properly. So let's go here. Um, so I have my skin weights. Um, Basically, I could rebuild this file just by hand by saying import model, import structure, and then import uh, skin weights with this mesh selected. And it will go through and bring everything together again. Uh, but I can also do this uh, through this code. So I'll go here and do a new data import and bring in my skin weights. So here's my skin weights. And if I hit process, yes. Here is um, my asset rebuilt. So uh, usually what I do at this point is I'll save a build file. Um, if I was going in and editing the skin weights, I would uh, add a new binary file and rename it uh, whip and do my work in progress in this whip file. And it's good to be saving constantly because you might do press the wrong button or Maya might crash. So saving is very important. Um, I'm going to stop this video here and the next video I'm going to go through how to put a rig on this simple asset. Uh,